Okay, so 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 let me ask the to to like pull up you know pull up my terminal, log into Perlmutter, and move around like I would on a normal day. And I was like, oh no, my stuff's all a mess. I'm gonna like clean it all up and organize it. And uh, because I'm like, you know, I don't want to invite people over to like a messy house. And she's like, no, 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 leave it exactly the way it is. <laughs> so I'm going to show you show you my mess. Um, and it's gonna start with with my desktop, unfortunately. <laughs> So let me let me share my screen and I can show it to you. Post is parsable. I need to be allowed to share my screen. Find you in the sea of hearts. So so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you of my workflow for how I get into Perlmutter, how I move around, how I do a few things. Um, you know, I think there's about maybe a third to half the people uh, compared to online are in this room. So if you want to be like, go faster, go slower, uh, that would really help me because I can go way faster if you want. Um, sometimes that's just fun to see. Okay, so let me find this. Good, okay. Um, I'm also not a normal Mac user. I only use Mac when I have to use my laptop. Um, so I open my terminal. I'm going to type in my SSH commands. Actually, can you make your terminal bigger? Yes. Maybe the text size. Mm -hmm. will be mm -hmm. Command, yeah, command plus. plus. Yeah, just do command plus. Yeah, there you go. Good. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if you noticed, it didn't ask my password. We didn't talk about that yet, did we? Okay. Um, you can set up a, a, a script that allows you to get a 24 hour key so you don't have to enter your password every single time. But if I hadn't done that already, at this step, it would ask me to enter my password and my MFA token. And I, and I do the thing where I have to go in here, you know, find the app and not get distracted by my messages. Right. Um, so then I end up here and I can tell you, the, the the first command that I'm usually going to do is like just to figure out what I'm working on and where I am, and that's usually an ls command that lists my files. But the one that I like to use is ls dash ltr, um, and what that does is it lists all my files. It lists them out in this long format, so I can see you know when they were done, when they're modified, when they're messed with, um, and also just gives me a nice column, and then. Uh, T says, organize them by the time, and R is reverse. So this is why my files are a mess, because I can just organize them by the uh, most recently modified files and just look at the last 10 and see what I was doing. <laughs> right. Um, so for example, uh, one project I'm working on now is Ticket Tech Analysis. So I'll do CD Ticket Tech Analysis. And if you're watching really closely, I type really fast. Right. If you haven't heard of tab complete, tab complete is your best friend on the terminal. Right. So if I don't do tab complete, this is about the speed I work at, and and this is exactly what happens. Right. <laughs> is I make a few typos along the way, then I press it and I get there. But with tab complete, this is the speed I type at. Right. So that's really helpful when you're on the the terminal. So you type just enough that it knows what you want. You hit tab. The rest of the command comes out, and you're in the directory you want to be. Um, just to tell you more fancy stuff that you don't need to know about at all right now, this is a Git. Um, this is a directory that has Git enabled on it. So, like the changes that I make here, uh, Git is tracking them. That's why you see that main thing that tells you which branch I'm on. You can set up different fancy stuff uh, with your uh, terminal and your screen, and and you should set those things up because. You want to make it as easy as possible for you to work efficiently. So, um, 
you know, if you're interested in learning how to do that, uh, we can, I can always reach out to one of us and I can um, put you, give you that information or show you where to find it. Um, and other people, I'm sure if you ask around, they know. Um, another thing that you may do a lot is you may wonder how much space you have. Eric, can I ask you a question? Yes, please, please drive this. So you, so when you entered into Perlmutter, um, you, did you land in your home directory? And if so, I'm guessing a lot of these directories we're seeing are actually sim links to different locations. Is that true? Um, so because this is like my home directory and mostly what I'm working with is just source code. Okay. I don't, so I don't worry about it too much. So like, I'm not, I'm not gonna, so like for, because I'm working, this is like a Git repo of source code, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm doing is I'm just, there you go. All the code in there is only 56 megabytes. So I'm not really worried about the size. I'm right. not running, it's not data intensive. Like I'm not compiling this code into an executable um, and I'm going to run that executable off of my home drive, right? It's not, it, there's no big data, there's no big project. It's just, it's it's like where I do, uh, let me just say, it's, it's basically for modifying source code. I think right. Be, okay. Um, That's okay. Okay. You, know, like, you want to see my, you want to see more, you want to see my scratch directory? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just, I was just saying that, you know, we were talking today about, um, you know, the home directory is, is pretty small. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just good to see that you are aware and you're managing that. Uh, but for new users, if they're um, not sure how to do that, yeah, if you show them that quota, they'll be able to see, actually, you're pretty close to filling yours up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not doing a good job yet. Uh, I mean, we can always we can always look into it, but you can see there there there's some different stuff, and I can always go through and clean it out. Um, I probably should. Um, it's like Slack is taking up a lot. Anyways, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> let's just stop. Um, so can you type in that show quota again, so we can just show everybody what all the things were there. You can also sh talk about that scratch quota that's shown there. All right, so I'm only using 1.7% of my scratch. Uh, but you can see this is gigabytes and this is terabytes. That's why that works. So, <laughs> um, and, and like I said, um, that they wouldn't let me clean anything out. <laughs> yep. uh, so let me show you what's in my scratch directory now. So, um, so yeah, so this tab complete also works for the scratch directory. I said that scratch or presenter, I can get to it this way. Um, same thing, if I type ls, this wouldn't make any sense to me. Um, I do ls ltr, and it just kind of showed me what are the most recent things I've been working on. Um, I, you know, I have this habit of labeling temp, but it's really just, um, you know, everything on scratch is temporary, so it's kind of, Kind of not really needed. I just don't want you know when they delete my stuff, I don't want them to feel bad, so I just <laughs> just leave it as temp in the front. Uh, but most of these come from a user ticket is trying to install one of these codes, and so I make a directory and try to get it to work and figure out what needs to be different. So, um, so that's Scratch. Um, the other one that I use a lot, and this is coming. So if I want to go back to home, I use this shortcut, the CD tilde back to my home directory. If you want the full path to your home directory, it's that one. Um, so you can use that command pwd to get the full directory wherever you are. So if you're using, so that dollar sign and the capital letters is like a environment variable that we have provided to make it easy to move around different file systems. Um, but if you need the full path, you can use PWD or you can use this echo and it'll tell you what that full path is. So it's kind of like a little shortcut variable. Um, this, is, this is me just reading what those are in those variables definitions right now. Faster, slower? No, that's great. Thanks. Well, I'm, I'm pulling the audience. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can't tell that's okay. One person said faster. Um, the one thing I also use is uh, this service town. So this is this is a symlink to a different place. So the CFS directory that I'm using. 
So um, I'll show you something cool. I do uh, LS service now, or CD service now. And I type PWD, it will show me that one, right? So now if I go back and I say, oh wait, let me back. If I say this real, real path thing and I type it, it'll tell me two different locations. Only one of them is the real place. That's kind of a neat thing. So anyways, um, this is CFS, right? So this is like a different file system. I don't need to be on CFS to show this, but if I want to do CFS, I hope I can just give it the directory I need. Well, now you know why I always use this real path, that thing. So I can copy and paste it. Well, I'll just type I think CFS code needs a path to work. Type the service name. Yes, CFS code of service. Oh, it's not a project. What? Uh, I want in the project. This is just service now. Service, service now is not a project. That's a directory name. Yeah, so I can, I can do it that way. I can also do, I also do it by directory. That's a full path usually. And again, like tab complete is my friend here. So there are two different ways to get that. Um, Libby, with any other commands off the top of your head you wanted to see? Um, no, I think that was mostly it. Um, so again, reminder, when we say to run from scratch, what that means is you would actually go CD into scratch. And then you're, when we show you how to submit jobs, you would want to, to run your job from scratch and then have all of your your application um, basically reading and writing to scratch as well. So anywhere where you tell it, okay, write some data, make sure you put the um, output file like path to somewhere in scratch. Um, I don't know if you have an example of that. Um, yeah, I, I was for. So I, I, I wouldn't be able to show that, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know that if I have a good that's one okay. off the top of my head. Anyways. Yeah, that's, that's totally fine. Um, the only thing I remember, I was looking at your list, and I'll do this because we can do, I'll do, um, I'm on Perlmutter. Sometimes I forget and I just SSH again, uh, but it actually will sort of point there. So now I'm, I'm on Perlmutter and I log into Perlmutter again. So we're in the Perlmutter inception step, right? So, so you can exit like that, but I never exit like that. I always use a control D, right? It's another shortcut for, for getting in and out of things. But if you start pressing control D like crazy on a Mac, it's the grid stuff. You said control D? Control D. Yeah, okay. so control D will exit out of the menu. So now I get stuck here, and then I have to go back and make a terminal. I don't know how to use it. But, um, anyways, is there anything else you would like to see or know about? I think if there's questions in the room, if anyone has anything they didn't get or want to ask about, tomorrow we'll do um, practice actually submitting jobs once we talk about jobs. Um, so in the meantime, just make sure you can get on the system. Um, Charles, did you wanna add anything? No, no, that was everything. If you wanted to close out and then we'll start tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific. Okay, sounds good. Well, thanks everybody. Uh, thanks, Eric. Make sure you fill out the feedback form. I put it in the chat, but let me put it again. So this is our survey day one. Um, give us feedback on how we did. Um, we continue to improve and and change up this training so that it's useful for people. So um, and keep putting questions in that Q and A doc. If they don't get, they'll you know we'll keep answering questions today, but we can do more tomorrow as well. And thank you, Eric. That was fantastic.